Hello and welcome to a new video about the electric field. We're talking about a capacitor. And we talked about how a capacitor is behaving when charging and decharging it. And today I want to make a little example to make it a little bit more clearer. Because I said last time our capacitor, the, 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 voltage at the capacitor is looking like u0 multiplied by 1 minus e raised by the power by minus d tau. And I said this tau, this tau is the time constant, uh, tau equals r times c. Okay. So we have this situation, this is our assumption, and actually what we want to do, we want to draw the, the charging voltage, the, 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 the charging procedure yeah, of this capacitor C. So actually we are switching at a certain point T, we are switching from here back to here. Okay, this is here, this point is here, here, book. We are switching. Before everything was zero, the voltage was zero and so on. Yeah. And now we want to know how does this look like. We know, okay, it is following, it is according this function. So actually we need this tau. Okay. So this tau, in our case, we have 10 kilo ohms. multiplied by 150 nanofarad minus 9 okay so actually this is uh, 10 times 150 is 100 1500 3 minus 6 second yeah. so this is 1.5 minus 3 seconds and this is 1.5 milliseconds. This is the time constant. This is the time constant. By the way, why can I just write seconds? I've talked to you last time, today I want to show you. Yeah, so ohm. Yeah, ohm. 1 ohm is actually 1 uh, volt per ampere, yeah. So this is one volt by coulomb. Coulomb is an ampere second. Coulomb divided by seconds. That's it. Yeah, one volt. This is one ohm. Yeah, and one farad. Who equals from Q equals C times U. Yeah. So we have here farad. So it's Coulomb by volt, yeah, one farad. So one farad multiplied by one ohm equals one Coulomb by volt multiplied by one volt seconds by Coulomb. Cook, 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 cook equals one second. Okay, so it is indeed seconds. That just to show you. So we have here that one dot five milliseconds. If I enter here milliseconds and put this in here as milliseconds, we should be fine. U0 is 10 volt and I can immediately grab my calculator. Do we see the numbers on the calculator? Everything good? More or less. More or less good. Let's see. So I will type in this formula. So we have here UC from T equals 10 volts multiplied by 1 minus minus E raised by the minus T divided by 1.5 milliseconds. Okay. Now let's calculate it for 1 millisecond. Take this for 1 millisecond. So we have here the formula. 10. Not that easy to find a location where you can read it. Here, probably. 10 multiplied by 1 minus E raised by the power of minus... T is now 1 millisecond divided by 1.5. 
Mm-hmm. What is the result? 4.865. So after one milliseconds, we are at 4.865. Here we are at 4.865 volts. So 84%. Okay, that's after one millisecond. After two milliseconds, let's see this. It's 7.3. 0.3 probably here 7.36 uh, 6 7 3 somewhere here must this be we are in 7 dot 7 dot 3 6 volts All right after 3 milliseconds we are 8.64 volts after 4 milliseconds 9.3 uh, 9.3 9.3 9.3 volts after 5 milliseconds 9.6 After six milliseconds, and I'm going on now. 9.8. After seven. 9.9. After eight. After eight. Nine dot nine five ninety nine dot five percent. We already reached after nine ninety nine dot seven five. Okay, we are there. So actually, let's see what is it after zero dot five because this is actually missing. I think two dot eight three. So after zero dot five, we had two dot eight three. 2.8, 2.8, and actually if we combine this now, it is looking like that. And now that we calculated this, we can have a look, here we have tau. Okay, tau. And I said, when we make a line from here to tau, where we will end at the end value. Yeah, let's see what is happening. Then we are here somewhere probably. It seems to be really the tangent to this. Yeah? So this is actually how this looks like. I hope it's not a big surprise that this is correct. <laughs> but now we calculated this really. Yeah? Let's have, let's calculate what is happening after one tau. Yeah? Let's draw this maybe in a different color, this tau here. After one dot, after one dot five, we had sixty-three, uh, six point three two. Yeah, here we had six point three two volts. So sixty-three dot two volts. After two tau, so after three milliseconds, we are here. Eighty-six. Yeah, this is two tau here. Yeah, and here we have three tau. This is 4 tau, here we have 5 tau, and this here, 
this would be 6 tau. Let's calculate this still. So here after 3 tau we are at 4.5 milliseconds and we will 9.5, exactly 9.5, 9.5 volts or almost exactly, 95% after 3 tau we already reached 95%. After 4 tau we have 98%. After 5 tau, so we are at 7.5 milliseconds, it's 99.3%, so 9.93 volts. Yeah? And here will also after 6 tau, so we are at 9. Let's calculate this also. 99.75. Nine dot nine seven five volts. Actually, after five tau, we can say it's done. Yeah, nothing more will happen here. Hmm? And it's exactly that behavior that like we've seen. And you could say, okay, this was easy. Hmm? This was easy. Just use the formula, set it in, calculate tau. There's RC and, and you, you can use tau and, and everything is fine. You also find tons of videos on the internet describing exactly this. Yeah, so there's an RC combination and we have a time constant and then this raw well, looks like that. Yeah. But attention, it's not always that easy. It's not always that easy that you only have RC. Yeah. I show you that this, this tau state there can be I will show you an example what I mean. Let's say pretty much the same situation as we had here. Look at that. This was the situation. So we had a voltage source. And now this time I will make here an R1. And here is the switch. This time I will make here now too a different resistor, a different value. And on this side we only have our C. So we have the U0. And now, let's say we have long time decharged and now we are charging. Book, we switch to this. Which R are we taking? Yeah? Which is the R we have to use for our tau? Yeah? So we call it tau1 and if I call it tau1 it's already pretty obvious. Yeah? So when charging, which of those two uh, resistors is somehow influencing how fast it can charge. Of course R1. Yeah? It's R1 multiplied by C. Yeah? This is charging. Time constant. And now we switch to the other side. Yeah? Because we are fully charged. Book, we switch down here. And now tau2 equals R2 multiplied by C, yeah, because this time the, the capacitor is decharged by R2, yeah? so this must be the time constant, define the time constant, this is no longer inside the circuit, yeah, and this is the decharging. Time constant. Hmm? So they might differ, yeah, depending on we have a switching element inside there, and the switching element is changing the circuit. And this might lead to the case that the time constants differ. And now you can of course say, yeah. you know what? Yeah. Why is that why is that difficult? Yeah. I show you another example. Hmm? Show you another example here. Voltage source. Here we have a switch. 
here we have a capacitor, right? And here we have a resistance. And then I make it a second resistor. Yeah. What is going on now? What is going on now? Let's first make it like that. Book. Yeah? The switch is closed. Yeah? The switch is... Which is now the R I have to consider? Which, which one is influencing the charging? Is it this one? And maybe this one also because it's in parallel to the capacitor and... How? how? Huh? There is a... there is... well, it's not an easy solution, but it, there... you can... you have to watch the... the circuit, how it is built now, yeah? So now it looks like that from the viewpoint of the capacity. Yeah? Of the capacitor, then here we have actually A and B, the connectors A and B of the capacitor, and we want to have a look into this. Yeah? So we are charging time constant in this time. In this case, it looks like this. Yeah? We have here somewhere A. Oh, let's draw it. Let's draw it with all, all other sources. We consider our capacitor a source, yeah? and all other sources we set to zero. So actually, it would look like that. A zero set. This is the zero set voltage source. Here we have our R1. Yeah? Here we have our C. And here we have our R2. R2, this is C, this is R1, and where we have, here we have A and B. And where our voltage source was, there's nothing, because we set it zero. And now I can going to calculate from A to B the, the capacitor, uh, the, the resistance. Yeah? So we are looking at from A. Let's see, on one side there is, from A going on one side, there is R1, and then we are already at B. And on the other side, ah, there is R2. And here between A and B, of course, we have again, Our C. Huh? And now we see it's actually looking like that, that we have A, and here we have a resistance which is R1 in parallel to R2. So actually this is 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2. Okay. And this is the resistance which is acting. Yeah. So we have here a tau 1, a charging time constant of R1 parallel R2 multiplied by C. This is the time constant how it is done in this case, yeah? when charging, when we close this switch. Right. Now let's have a look what is happening if we open the switch. Book, yeah? the charging time constant. And we're doing exactly the same. We again set this zero. Yeah? So here we have the open switch. Here we have our R1. Here we have our C. Here we have our R2. And 
and we have the nodes A and B. This is a different situation. We have opened the switch here. Huh? We have, in both cases, we have set this, this voltage source to zero. Huh? So let's see how this looks like. Yeah? So on one side A, huh? on one side there's still R1, going to B, and from B we are also going to R2, over here now, huh? and then it's open, huh? then it's no connection. What resistance do we have between A and B? Because here actually is still, of course, the, the C, because we are looking from the C side inside. Here we have our C. We're looking from the C into our, into our, <laughs> this always sounds funny, just view from, from our capacitor into the circuit view from it. Yeah, the actually this is what it means. How does the capacitor see with its two connection or feels, if you want to, feels the, the circuit. And it feels on one side it feels R1, on the other side it feels nothing because it's open. Yeah? So actually what is between A and B is just R1. So our D charging time constant R2 is R1 multiplied by C. You see, it's also changing, it's also changing, but it's more complicated. But with this little trick, let's imagine or let's determine what is C feeling, what, 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 what is uh, the capacitor feeling, which resistance. Huh? Then you can, you can calculate this, huh? the T's, the two T's, <laughs> yeah, Tau's time constant. Yeah. So this is the example of charging in teacher. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you also hear in first moment when uh, after the switching, uh, the capacitor is uh, acting like a short circuit and after a long time it's acting like uh, if it, uh, 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 a, a wire break, like an open circuit. This you hear sometimes that in first this is this is a sentence, huh? so this is something, yeah, but it's not correct. At least fifty percent are not correct, because who says that I'm going to charge the capacitor uh, when it's fully decharged? Okay, when decharging a capacitor uh, or after a long time, let's say after a long time, okay, there will no current be running through the capacitor. So there, it, it is really acting after a long time. You see, we have 1.5 milliseconds and five, five times, so 7.5 milliseconds are already a long time. So this is a, a relative, a relatively long time. Yeah? So after a long time, it is indeed acting like it would be a, no connection there, yeah? like a wire break. But when charging, it does not mean it is acting like a short circuit, yeah? because it doesn't mean we charge from zero to something. We can charge from one level to another level. We can decharge from one level to another level. Yeah? So this does not really matter. It, no, no, this is wrong. Yeah? Depending on the situation, if we just look at this, then it's correct. Yeah? At first, it's acting like it would simply not be there. It would be short circuit. Yeah? But if I'm Starting here, yeah, it's not acting like it would be short circuit. It is there because it's already charged. Yeah. Here, everything when the current is zero, it's acting like um, there would be a wire break. That's true. So fifty percent of this common knowledge is true. Yeah, charging of a capacitor. Now, I hope it is clearer how a capacitor is behaving. Yeah. Next time we make another application of an RC element, so these things are called RC elements, we are talking about a filter element, yeah? a low-pass filter element we will do next time. Yeah? What this is and why it's called filter and what is filtered, yeah? I will explain in the next video. 
for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.